All right, come on in, everybody. We got something really fun to do this morning. Can I have all of the children, 12 and under, just come and sit on the front row right here? All the children, 12 and under. We did not tell them about this, but that's okay. We do that stuff all the time here at Recalibrate. What's a heads up? All right, we got something really fun to do today. Um, we're going to do a baby dedication. Come on. And it's actually our very first one. I don't know why we've never done one, because I actually really like doing them. Because um, uh, our admin, is, which was me for a long time, is not very good at his job. But... Uh, <laughs> But hey, Bryce, Elizabeth, and the family that came with you, anyone that wants to come up with you, or you can, whoever wants to come up can. We're going to bring the little Hope Marie on up. Come on. Yeah. In Scripture, how many of you guys know that Samuel was dedicated by Hannah to the Lord? And so we love doing baby dedications. All of my kids have been dedicated to the Lord, you know, privately in our home, obviously. But we, when, when doing a baby dedication, it's us taking a stance of realization and truth where we realize that we are simply stewards of these wonderful children and that we want to be amazing, you know, earthly parents and lead them and guide them in their walk with their heavenly parent. And so just this morning, we're going to, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to have the kids lead out in this. Um, I'm going to have you guys sing Jesus Loves You over Hope Marie. And then everybody else join in. This is what we used to do at Pine Valley Church when I was there. And I loved, I always loved it. And it's, we're going to be singing. It's like a prophetic song over her that she will always know the love of God over her life. So I'm just going to give the mic to some of you kiddos, and you guys lead us. You're going to lead the congregation in singing Jesus Loves You. Will, she, will Hope let me hold her? Awesome. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes, Jesus loves hope, yes, Jesus loves hope. Yes, Jesus loves hope. The Bible tells her so. She's so cute. All right. Can I have the, the team come on up and just... Just keep your hands stretched out. We're going to pray, and then I'm going to let the parents, who Bryce and Elizabeth, if you both want to pray, that's fine. Um, good luck, Bryce. <laughs> and we're just going to just pray uh, as a congregation over hope, and whatever the Lord gives us, we're just going to speak out, all right? Yeah, she's. She's so cute. We we got the best seats in the house right here. Yeah. Anyone want to go first? <laughs> no, Lucas has to go second. Yeah, I got something right away. Um, Romans five five. I'm just gonna prophesy this over you. So, hope does not disappoint. So, hope, your father is so proud of you. 
your earthly father, but especially your heavenly father. And you will always know how loved you are and that you are pleasing to your heavenly father because the love of God has been poured out within your heart, hope. The love of God has been poured out within your heart through the Holy Spirit who's given to you. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hope does not disappoint. <laughs> hope, you are a disciple taught of the Lord, obedient to God's will, with great peace and undisturbed composure. You are a child in whom there is no blemish. Uh, Mark 16, 15 says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So I declare you that you will be a proclaimer of the gospel of heaven in Jesus' name. We just declare that hope arise, that everywhere she walks may hope arise in Jesus' name. And we just speak that over the meaning of her name. And God, I just, yeah, Lord, we just thank you so much. I pray that she would awaken to know the glory of the Lord throughout her days in Jesus' name. And I just keep getting uh, hope of the nations and that she is a daughter of nations and she's going to have a heart uh, for people for lots of people and she's going to have a voice to speak to those people and we just bless the hope that wells up within her that stirs up passion and zeal and we just bless that in Jesus name yeah the first thing I heard when I just laid my hands on you was meek blessed are the meek God blesses those who are humble for they will inherit the whole earth that's um, Matthew 5 5 she will be marked with humility. That her, humili her humility will draw people to repentance. And I feel like, um, Mom and Dad, you need to know that um, the Lord is marking you with humility as well because it's something that she needs to fulfill her destiny. Thank you, Father. You will know that you are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. That everywhere your foot, cute little feet, everywhere your foot steps, <laughs> he, he, your Savior, has given you. And you will help reconcile people to God in Jesus' name. Lord, I know that you have joy in Hope Marie's life and that she will spread not only smiles but her light will definitely shine as she walks into every room so she can share the love of Jesus. I love this baby. <laughs> in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, I'm Graham Tam, by the way. I don't know how you follow all of that up. <laughs> but may hope just be a, a joy to everyone who ever meets her. May she just shine her light to everyone that she meets. May everybody see Jesus when they see hope. Um, I don't know if any of you know, but we didn't know, we didn't ever actually got a, uh, what do you call it, a screening to see what she, it was ultrasound, if she was going to be a boy or a girl, but the Lord both revealed to us that it was going to be a girl and her name was Hope, Hope to give to those here on earth who have no hope. And so I just speak that into existence for you and um, may you just fulfill what it is that the Lord has for you. And um, <laughs> I just love you. So, um, Graham Tam has uh, never been to a church like this one before, and my heart is definitely here. Whenever I'm in town, I can't wait to come and just be blessed by everybody in here. And this baby is definitely a blessing to all in this church. 
And I just want to say thank you to every single person in here because with me being so far away, this is Bryce and Elizabeth's church family. So therefore, I hear about it all the time. And it makes my heart full knowing that she is going to be loved, Hope is going to be loved, and that Elizabeth and Bryce are loved here. And I just want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart <laughs> and Hope Marie's heart um, that they have a family here. Thank you. Yeah, so just stretch your hands out one more time. We dedicate you, Hope Marie, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You will know the voice of your Father. You will know the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will know the voice of Jesus from a very young age. You already sense it, and you will know it very clearly, prophetess of the Most High. I heard this song over her. It's awesome. Um, when my hope is in you, God, I am steadfast. I will not be moved. I'm anchored, never shaken. All my hope is in you. And he's bringing hope to the hopeless. And he's giving his heart to the broken. And sharing his home with the orphan. She is the joy. She is the joy. He is the hope of the nations. The Father's heart we're embracing. And he is the song we're declaring. Because she is the joy, she is the joy. Let hope arise. Sing that. Let hope arise. 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 Hope arise. <laughs> Come on. You can stare at that little baby all day. That's all. Thank you, guys. Bless you. <laughs> so cute. Ugh, makes me want to have another one. And then I go get groceries and I'm like, nah. Just kidding. <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. We might have to, I talked with Christy about this, but we might have to um, have a really big dedication day for all of our kids who have, we haven't, uh, you know, dedicated. I do think it's important, but anyway, will you guys just welcome up Jen LaFrance. She's going to be bringing the word this morning. Come on. We, I love your journey, Jen, with the Lord. I um, respect and honor your walk with the with God so much and what you've walked through and where you at, where you, where you, where you at. <laughs> and, um, no, I just, I mean, we definitely honor you and Lucas and respect you guys so much and love what you carry. And uh, would you guys just stretch your hands out and say, God, get her. get her. And we thank you, Lord, for the gifting you've placed upon her life. But most of all, I thank you for her history with you that we get to, that she's going to invite us into this morning in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's hard to top a, a baby dedication, but that's a good way to break the ice. I'm like, all right, I can do this. Um, so I just, I have a quick announcement. <laughs> um, the Operation Christmas Child, I thought all the boxes were due today, but we actually have one more week. So it's extended one more week for everybody to get their boxes in by next Sunday. So if you still want to participate in that, please do so. All the information's in the back and the boxes are in the back. Um, and I'm just, I'm going to pray. <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you that you are always faithful to help us. Thank you that you are my strength and my shield. And I thank you, God, um, that you are here with us. You are with your people and you never leave us. You never forsake us. You empower us. You counsel us. Um, 
and you're just so faithful. And so I just thank you that you're faithful right now um, to help me deliver this message. And I just pray, God, that you get me out of the way and you just speak through me, Holy Spirit. And I pray um, that the people here would have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to them today. God, help us to have open, soft, tender hearts and just to really get revelation today, Lord. I'm, I'm just praying for Holy Spirit-filled revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. So I actually was not expecting to speak again so soon. <laughs> but God put it on my heart, and I, um, I asked Justin, I said, hey, is it okay if I speak again? And he said, yeah, go for it. So I was like, darn, I was hoping he said no. No, I, I wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I just, I love that about our church because our pastor's heart is to give women a voice and um, a place to be a witness for Christ from up here. And I just really value that and appreciate that. So thank you. Um, yeah, and the message that God laid on my heart actually started a couple weeks ago in the pew on a Sunday uh, while Justin was preaching, I just heard Holy Spirit drop in my head, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or be healed. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he said it again, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or be healed. And I was like, okay. I'm like, I don't know. I, I need to go home and like have some time to think about that. So I knew he was on that and that was going to be what I would be studying in my quiet time that week. And so that next week, I just, I was looking at the different places in the Bible where, you know, this talked about the paralytic man, and you can find it in Matthew 9, 5, Mark 2, 9, um, and Luke 5, 17. But I'm going to be reading in the Amplified version out of Luke. And because I don't have an Amplified Bible Bible, I have to use my phone. So let me pull that up. So starting in Luke 5.17, it says, One day, as Jesus was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal. So as soon as I read that, I, I kind of stopped there. I was like, oh, and the power of the Lord was present with him, with Jesus, to heal. And I just thought that was so interesting. But that word power is dunamis in the Greek. And it's used over a hundred times in the New Testament. And um, it's translated power or miracles most of the time. There's a couple times where it's strength or might. And also I thought it was interesting that it's also translated as the word ability. And it was used as ability a couple of times. And in Matthew 25, um, it's the parable of the talent. So that word ability, when it was when that manager was like passing out the different talents, it was according to their ability, according to their dunamis. And so it just was making me think like, wow, you know, when the manager was like upset that the one guy just buried his one talent, it was almost like it is offensive because God has put dunamis power inside of us to do something with it. And he just buried it, you know, and it was like, I've given you this miraculous power to do something with it. And so I just thought that was very interesting. And then the other place that it said ability was in Hebrews 11:11, 11, 11, where it was Sarah's ability to conceive. And I just thought that was really neat. But the definition of that dunamis is, it is the power to break through the natural order to achieve a supernatural result. So obviously in Sarah's case, she was a very old woman. So God had to break through that natural order and it, that was that dunamis power. And that dunamis power is the power that um, speaks of performing miracles, healing, raising the dead, giving, um, helping us to testify with great boldness, shaking the heavens and creating new life and a new nature and it's God himself. He is that dunamis power. And so I just, that was a little side tidbit. That's not really what I'm going to be talking about. But <laughs> I just thought that was super cool. Um, anyway, because that was the first verse that I came to. I was like, oh, that's really neat. But what I really had planned on talking about is the connection between forgiveness and healing and prospering. And so let's keep reading in Luke here. Luke chapter 5. Let's start in 18 now. 
Some men came carrying on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed, and they tried to bring him in and lay him down in front of Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and removed some tiles to make an opening and lowered him through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their active faith springing from confidence in him, remember I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, um, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. The scribes and the Pharisees began to consider and question the implications of what he had said, saying, who is this man who speaks blasphemies by claiming the rights and prerogatives of God? Who can forgive sins? That is, remove guilt, nullify sin's penalty, and assign righteousness, except God alone. But Jesus, knowing their hostile thoughts, answered them, why are you questioning these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, get up and walk? But in order that you may know that the Son of Man, the Messiah, has authority and power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. The man immediately stood up before them, picked up his stretcher, and went home glorifying and praising God. They were all astonished, and they began glorifying God, and they were filled with reverential fear and kept saying, we have seen wonderful and incredible things today. And I just, I, I thought it was interesting, the Pharisees, like, they knew the implications of what Jesus was saying in that moment. He was claiming to be God, and because they were like, who can forgive sins except God? And I just was meditating on this and thinking to myself, like, Lord, you, you purposely and strategically chose to forgive this man's sins because I'm thinking of this scenario, like the paralytic man, his friends are like, you know what, we've heard about this guy, Jesus. He heals, like, let's bring our paralytic friend and we're gonna get him to Jesus no matter what. And so they were going to, you know, for the healing, not for forgiving the sins. So I can't help, I, you know, as I'm like thinking about this, I couldn't help but wonder, were they like, wait, we didn't come here to, about sin. We came here to like see this man get up and walk, you know? But Jesus addressed that first. And I think it was one, he wanted to show the Pharisees in the room, like his authority. He wanted them to know exactly what he was saying and what he was claiming to be and who he was claiming to be. He was saying, essentially, I am God and I do have the power and authority to forgive sins. I think also he was modeling for us um, that there is a connection between forgiveness of sins and healing of the body. And oftentimes when we have soul wounds, it's hard to receive from the Lord. It's hard to receive healing from the Lord. It's hard to receive love from the Lord and acceptance. And so Jesus knowing this man and what he was going through, he decided to address that issue first. Let's clear that out of the way. So now you can really receive your healing because I, I imagine, like, we don't know how he got paralyzed, why he was paralyzed. Was he born that way? Did something happen? Was it his fault? But I know that when you have to walk a lifetime in a state of paralyzation, there's likely to be a lot of shame and unworthiness because you're so dependent upon everybody else to care for you. And so I just, I loved that Jesus chose to address that first. <clears throat> and um, I, f I feel like that's a model to us, like as we go out and minister to people, each person is different. There's not a formula. We can go to every person and then ask Holy Spirit, like, Lord, how do you want me to minister to this person? I know they need a healing, but does their soul issue need to be addressed first? And if so, then God will give us the means to do that. And so I just, I really, I really loved that. Um, I wanted to also read Matthew 18, 18. If you guys don't have to turn there, I can just turn. Jesus is saying, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind and forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. <clears throat> and whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. And so I just feel like Jesus is showing us that we have power as 
believers to carry the same authority that he did to bind and loose things off of people, and we need to be doing that. And Jesus also said that we have authority to forgive, to tell people that their sins are forgiven, and also to be healed. Um, and so I just, I wanted to give this example of something that Lucas and I witnessed. This was when we first started coming to Recalibrate. We were heading down to Albuquerque for a Randy Clark conference, and, you know, there, there's that long stretch of highway to Albuquerque, and we were just, like, zipping by. And I'm, like, on my phone, like, messing around doing something, and I didn't even see this guy on the side of the road. And we passed him, and then Lucas just flipped a U-turn. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are we going back? <laughs> and he was like, well, I saw, this, uh, I saw this Native American man on the side of the road, and I just I feel like we need to turn around and stop. And I wish that I could tell you that I was like, yes, okay, but it was cold. I didn't want to be late. I wanted to get a good seat at the conference. I'm like, really? Like, do we need to stop? And, and he was like, no, I just, I really feel the Lord on this. So I was like, okay. Um, so then we stopped. And, you know, I, I didn't get out of the car at first, but he did. And he prayed for his healing. The guy's arm was in a sling. And nothing happened, but then um, after Lucas kind of was talking to him for a while, he brought him back in our truck, and he was like, we're going to take this guy to the little trading post, uh, you know, like 10 minutes up the road or whatever. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> so there was Daryl in our car. <laughs> and Daryl, bless his heart, he had a lot of woes. Like, he just had, like, just one sad story after the other and I'm like man this guy he's like he's really like having a hard time in life you know and it, it was just sad and we got to the little trading post and we were just like you know what Daryl Jesus has the answer for you would you like to you know receive Jesus into your heart and because we, we'd be happy to pray for you about that and he sat for a minute. He actually, like, wasn't like, oh, yeah. And, and sometimes people will be like, oh, I already know Jesus or whatever. But he actually, like, sat there and kind of and contemplated it, which I thought was so cool. And then all of a sudden, he looks up at us, and he's like, yeah, I want that. And we were like, okay. So then we just, like, prayed for him, and we led him in this prayer uh, for his salvation, you know, and that he would receive Jesus into his heart, and he, he prayed all that, and it was so cool, and just, like, a lightness just lifted off of his eyes, like, just that heaviness and that dark cloud, like, you could see hope, like, come into him, and then all of a sudden, like, the arm that's in the sling, he starts doing this, and he's just, like, looking in, like, ah, like, what the heck, you know, and we were like, what is going, and we were like, we're going to pray healing over you, like, let's do it, and so we're like, Lord, heal him, and he just was like, oh my gosh, like, my hand is moving, and so he gets out of the car, and we gave him some money, and like, we're, we're just like in awe, like, what just happened, <laughs> and and then he, we can see him in our rear view mirror, and he's just like waving like this at us and with this big old grin, and it was so cool. And that was like probably one miracle that I think I've ever really like seen like that. You know, that was so cool. So anyway, I just, I felt like all that to say is I do think there's a connection between the soul and the body, and um he needed to know his sins were forgiven, I think, before he could even receive that healing. And I just, I feel like Jesus, he modeled lots of different ways to minister healing, right? Like sometimes he just healed them and that was that. Sometimes he spit mud, or, you know, sometimes he said, be healed, your faith is healed, you now go and sin no more. So there's just different ways that God wants us to be sensitive to ministering to people and just remembering that people's souls are often hurting when uh, they have a physical ailment. Um, so which is easier to say, you know, that, that was like the thing I was con contemplating all week, like, well, which is easier? Is it easier to forgive sins? Is it easier to heal? And I came to the conclusion, it's both. For Jesus, it's both. He paid for them both with his body and his blood, you know. Psalm 103 
says, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, I will not forget your benefits. He who uh, forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. So for Jesus, they're both easy. For Jesus, he's always the answer. And he wants us to remember that we carry the answer inside of us as we go out there. Um, I'm going to grab a drink before I get to my second point. The second thing that the Lord was putting on my heart in regards to forgiveness and healing and prospering is the importance of forgiving and not holding on to offense. Unforgiveness, it's been scientifically proven by secular scientists and psychologists that unforgiveness, bitterness, anger actually does produce negative effects in the body, which can lead to diseases of all kinds. So obviously unforgiveness is a very... It's a soulish thing, and we have to deal with it. Um, forgiveness is critical to our health, and it's what Jesus modeled. It's, it's basically why he came to earth, right, was to forgive. And so if, if he showed us that, we're supposed to forgive as well. And it's so important to Jesus that when the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray or how to pray, he added a big segment of the Lord of his prayer that he was teaching about forgiveness. And I want to read that because I think it's super important. So Matthew 6, starting in verse 12. Jesus said, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive you your trespasses. So that's that's pretty intense. <laughs> we need to forgive. Like that's how important it is. It's like if you want your heavenly Father to forgive you, you have to offer forgiveness. And you know, up in verse twelve, it says, "And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors." And when you think about debt, like when anybody who's who's ever been in debt before, I mean, obviously we've all been in debt to Jesus, but like financially, who's been in debt? it consumes your mind, right? Like you think about it all the time. So when somebody, like if somebody owed you a debt, you would be thinking about that person. They would be living rent-free in your head because every time you saw them, you'd be a little irritated that they owe you money and they're not paying you back. And vice versa, like if you owe somebody a debt, they're upset with you. And so ultimately, Jesus wants us to be free. Like, He wants us to be free of debts. Oh, no man, anything but to love, right? And so we need to offer forgiveness and we need to ask for forgiveness. So that way we're just free people. We don't owe anybody anything and they don't owe us anything. And so I just, I feel like forgiveness is a big deal to the Lord. And it made me think of that story um, in Matthew 18 about the king who wanted to settle the accounts and he, he went to his slaves and he's like, hey, you owe me a million dollars and, you know, you're going to have to basically sell your wife, sell your kids and everything you owe or everything you do, you're going to have to pay it back in full. And the guy like fell down before him and he's like, have mercy on me, you know, and he and then the guy, the king had compassion on him and forgave his debt. But then the guy who was forgiven all that debt, the million dollar debt that was impossible to pay, he goes and finds somebody who owes him like $10,000. You know, so it's something smaller, but significant enough to him, but smaller in comparison to what he had just been forgiven. And he basically just went and like beat that guy, threw him into prison and said, you're going to have to pay me in full. And so it was like, where did all the mercy and compassion go? Like, it was like, it didn't even compute. And then that king heard about this and he's like, what are you doing? Like, where, did you not know that I had compassion on you? And yet you couldn't even extend compassion on your fellow servant. And he's like, and now guess what's going to happen? And I, I want to read this because I don't want to butcher it with my paraphrase, but Matthew 18.33. 
This is what Jesus says that the king was saying. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave who owed you little by comparison as I had mercy on you? And in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers until he paid all that he owed. My heavenly father will also do the same to every one of you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. And that's what I want to, my point in this is just that when we choose unforgiveness, we're actually opening the door to being tormented. You know, so it's super important to keep those short accounts. So that way we're not going to be tormented in our physical body or our minds. Um, and when we forgive others, it basically breaks a soul tie. And so the Lord was having me. So a couple weeks ago, I, I definitely struggle at times with rejection and feeling left out and, um, just not like, yeah, not feeling loved and accepted. And the Lord has done a lot of work. I've done inner healing and it's helped tremendously, but every now and again, something will happen that just like triggers it and, and starts me spiraling down. And I, and something happened and I was like feeling super rejected and um, not accepted. And I just was like, Lord, I know that I'm accepted and loved by you, and I know that I'm not rejected. It's like I know all the right things, but something's not computing in my heart with this. And I've even dealt with it before, but I need, I, I just was like, Lord, what do you want me to know, and what do you want me to do? And so he led me in this exercise. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go get your journal. I want you to write a list of every single person that you can think of, that you have felt rejected by, and I will also help you remember other people that maybe you're not thinking of, and you can write that down. And so I was like, okay, so I did that. I wrote down this long list. It was very long. <laughs> and, and he said, no matter how big or small, the rejection can be tiny, you know, but it's in there and you need to get it out. And so I was like, okay. And so I did that. And then he said, now what I want you to do is I want you to go one by one with every single one of those people. And I want you to, I want you to say, say this, Lord, I forgive them for rejecting me and I, or how they made me feel rejected. And I release them into your care and I bless their spirit in Jesus name. And I, it took a little while to go through everybody. And, and some people, it's harder than others. But what I did notice with a lot of the people is I just realized most of these people weren't even, like, trying to reject me, you know? It was just my perception of the rejection that was coming in and those lies that the enemy was able to, like, work in. And so it, it actually just made me, like, be able to release them all the more because it was like, Father, they don't know what they're doing you know, and, um, yeah, so that was good, and it was cool, because after I did that exercise, I even saw a few of these people that were on my list, and there was, like, there was, like, a breakthrough, like, there was warmth, and I didn't have that funk with them anymore, and I was, like, okay, I'm not feeling rejected by these people, and um, I actually had a good interaction with them, and I just felt like that was so powerful, but then a couple days later, something happened that triggered the same thing. And I was like, what? I just, I just had this breakthrough. I just went through this exercise. I was like, Lord, what is going on? Why does it still hurt? And um, God showed me. He's like, remember how Peter said you forgive 70 times 7? He's like, not only does that apply literally, but it also applies every time that trigger comes in. Every time a memory comes in and wants to take me back down that spiral, I get to say, no, I released them. I already forgave them. And I'm standing on that forgiveness. And I'm not going to just keep going down and down. And then it just, like, breaks it really quick. And so it's just kind of like healing, right? Like, we have to stand on our healing. We also have to stand on the forgiveness that we've given, you know, um, so we just keep releasing forgiveness and the Lord, after I was done with this exercise, I just got this vision of like with each person, it was like this tangled rope. Like I just saw this like tangled rope. And then as I released each person, 
the rope just supernaturally became untangled and it wasn't actually one rope it was two ropes tangled together and then I saw this these little flames of fire just like and burn it all up and it was just like as far as the east is from the west that's how far he's removed our transgressions and that's like how we're to be with people and I'm not I also want to just be clear that forgiveness doesn't always equal immediate reconciliation. It doesn't always equal immediate trust. Like we can still forgive people and release them and release our souls from them. And there's still maybe for the lack of a better word, proceed with caution, right? Like trust takes time to earn reconciliation needs to come on the heels of seeing fruits of repentance right? And sometimes that's not always possible. Sometimes the people we have a soul tie with are already dead and we just can't, you know, physically have that conversation of forgiveness with them. Sometimes there's distance. Sometimes there's just people from like high school, you know, that we, we are not in contact with anymore. So, um, reconciliation isn't always going to happen, but that releasing of our soul can happen and the debt can be released. And so I, I hope that makes sense. Um, and I just wanted to also read 1 Peter 2.23 because I thought that was really good. This is talking about Jesus. While being reviled and insulted, he did not revile or insult in return. While suffering, he made no threats of vengeance, but kept entrusting himself to him who judged fairly. And I just feel like in the, in the area of forgiveness, that's, that's what we do. We keep entrusting ourselves to Jesus and we commit the, essentially, essentially when we're offended and hurt, there's an injustice and we want that injustice like settled, right? But vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so we need to just release people and trust that Jesus is going to work on them and bless their spirit. And I think supernatural things can happen through that. And I, I do believe supernatural reconciliation can happen too. Um, you know, the easiest way to, when people need forgiveness is either I'm going to ask you to forgive me for the wrong I've done to you or you're going to ask me to forgive you. Like that's probably the quickest way. Like when somebody actually apologizes to you in humility and they recognize what they've done, it's so much easier to clear it, you know. Also, you know, when we confess our sins one to another, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all righteous unrighteousness. And so I just I feel like when we're struggling with like, man, I'm just offended with these people, and I don't know what to do, you know, get with somebody you trust, confess that, and that starts to break down those barriers and it starts softening your heart. And then you can start to hear clearly how God wants you to release these people. But rejection might not be your thing. It, it might be just anger or irritation or offense, you know, but take, I just encourage you guys this week, maybe pray about some people that you need to release those soul ties with and really truly forgive and and trust them into the Lord and entrust your situation into the Lord. Um, I'm going to take another drink. The last thing that I wanted to share was just something super cool that the Lord gave me personally uh, about a week ago. And some of you know my testimony and I, I shared it a couple years ago um, in full. So if, if you don't know my testimony, I'm not going to share that in full again. You can watch it on YouTube or you can ask me, but I did want to just share a snippet of it because it pertains to what I want to share, what God was showing me. And, um, so before I was saved, when I was 16, I got pregnant and I did choose to have an abortion. And in my early twenties, still before I was saved, uh, Lucas and I were dating and we got pregnant two different times, or I got pregnant two different times and we chose to have abortions. So I, I have, <laughs> I have, I know that I am forgiven and I have worked through this. I've done inner healing sessions with Gwen and he, uh, Kiki and it, 
it has done wonders for my soul and um, my heart. And, you know, for 14 years of my Christian life, I definitely lived with the stigma of carrying that. And it was super uncomfortable. I, I carried a lot of shame, a lot of self-hatred. And it wasn't really until I, we came to recalibrate uh, almost six years ago now that I learned about inner healing and just recognized that, wow, I was still carrying just a lot of shame and guilt and pain um, from this from these choices. Um, and so, yeah, I, I know that I'm forgiven and it's interesting because whenever like it comes up again, there's still hurt. I, and I think that is kind of the sting of sin and probably the natural consequences is that it will still hurt from time to time. The things that you remember that you've done, um, but you're always so grateful to God for the changed life that you have. Um, and so I just, uh, the other week, like, uh, when I was, you know, scrolling through like the news, like on the Epic times, it had this, um, time-lapse computer like AI simulation of like a baby developing in the womb from the time of conception to the time um, you give birth. And it was super, like, neat. I mean, if only I could have seen that, like, back then. <laughs> you know, it probably would have changed the course of my life totally. But um, so I just, I happen to be watching it. And when you see the weeks of where you know you had an abortion, it's it's intense. I And I just, I couldn't help but cry because it just still hurts, you know, even though I know I'm forgiven. <laughs> um, and I just was like, Lord, I really know I'm forgiven, but this still hurts. And I'm like, is it always going to hurt? And sometimes God doesn't answer those questions, you know, but he tells you something else. And uh, I just, I heard Holy Spirit say to me, Jen, you've been stuck in the prodigal son's mindset for a long time. And I was like, what? <laughs> Um, he's like, yeah, you've been stuck in the prodigal son's mindset for a really long time. And I want you to go read that story because, you know, probably most people who've read the Bible know the prodigal son's story by heart, you know, but I knew that in that moment, Holy Spirit had something for me that I needed to see. And it just like hit me like a ton of bricks. So I want to read it to you guys because it's more impactful that way. Um, I'm going to read it from Luke 15, starting in verse 11. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them inappropriately said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. So he divided the estate between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered together everything that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he wasted his fortune in reckless and immoral living. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to do without and be in need. So he went and forced himself on one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. He would have gladly eaten the carob pods that the pigs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger, and no one was giving anything to him. But when he finally came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough food while I'm dying here of hunger? I know. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just treat me like one of your hired men. And that's where I want to stop. When I got to verse 19, that's what hit me like a ton of bricks. That is exactly what Holy Spirit was saying that I've been stuck in. Because I, I think of this man, he's like, you know what? I've screwed up big time. I'm not even worthy to be like, I'm not even worthy to be a son, you know, but... I'm just going to be okay being in my father's house with my basic needs provided for. 
And that is where I have been stuck. It's been a very small, limited thinking because there's a part of me that's like, you know what? Other Christians who haven't had abortions, who, you know, obviously didn't have sex before marriage, they, they probably get like the crown jewel of the Christian life, right? <laughs> you know, and I have been stuck in that thinking. That's what God showed me. I, and I didn't even really realize it, but I have just been kind of content, like being in my father's house, having my basic needs provided for, and not really thinking much greater beyond that, that my life could be something extraordinary or great or like beyond my wildest dreams, that there's a certain level of settling there. And um, I just... I sat down in my chair just with the weightiness of that, like, oh my gosh, you're right. I have been doing that. And he's like, do you think that's my heart for you? Just that you get in and, you, and I just provide your basic needs and that's all I want for you? And I was like, no, and I'm sorry, God, you're right. Like, I have been limited in my thinking and been thinking very small. And... I just want to finish reading that story really quick. So the man got up and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly, bring out the best robe for the guest of honor and put it on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet and bring the fattened calf and slaughter it and let us invite everyone and feast and celebrate. For this son of mine, as good as dead, is alive again. He was lost and has been found. So they began to celebrate. And that was just the beginning. That's what God was showing me, like, all of that was just the beginning, Jen. It was the beginning of the celebration. The celebration doesn't end. It keeps going. You go from glory to glory, and it just keeps getting better and better. And I, I think of Justin's testimony. He shared that for a time he was a prodigal, right? And Jake and Don were praying for him. And, and when he came back to the Lord, I'm sure your parents weren't like, okay, yay, Justin. Well, now you're in. Now just settle into that and just have your basic needs provided for. No, no. Their heart as his parents, they, they were like, now he's ready to discover everything that God put in him. And we want everything that God put in him to be like on full display. That's the heart of the father. It's like God had a purpose and a story for me before the foundation of the world. And it was beyond anything I could ever think or imagine. And it's like, as soon as I came to him, that was just the beginning, and now I could finally step into everything that he already thought of, and none of the stuff that I had done even mattered anymore. He doesn't remember it anymore, you know? And so I think sometimes when we remember the pain of our choices, it's okay to remember because it's almost like those, remem those stones of remembrance where we know the faithfulness of the Lord on our journey, but it's not to keep us stuck in small, limited thinking. It's just a time to remember and keep celebrating again that I am going from glory to glory. God does have big things for me, and I am not going to be afraid to step in into those things because this world needs what what I carry because I carry God in me, and the world needs what each and every one of you carry. So we need to just repent of that small thinking because God wants to prosper us. He wants to prosper us. And John, or 3 John 1, 2 says it like this, and this is my heart for you guys. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically just as your soul prospers spiritually. And so that's God's heart for you. He wants you to prosper. And so that's, that's all I have. So everybody, you could stand up. And I just want everybody to place their hands on their hearts. <laughs> just go ahead and close your eyes. Will you have something? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
I just want to pray for you guys, and then Justin will close us out. <sighs> Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, that you want to prosper us, and that we just repent of anywhere inside our hearts that we have held on to unforgiveness where we haven't received your forgiveness in full measure, Lord, where we've had small and limited thinking, we just break that now in the name of Jesus. And we say, Lord, have your way. Have your way in our lives. We just bless you, Father. We thank you for the good things that you give us. We thank you that today is just the beginning of the celebration. And I just pray that anyone who doesn't know you, Lord, that they will come forward and receive you as their Lord and Savior. I pray, God, that anyone who needs physical healing or soul healing, that they will come to this altar and receive ministry, and we just break the power of just sickness and disease off of people. I break the power of just demonic oppression in Jesus' name. I say you are healed in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. Today is your day to be set free. And we just pray, God, that as we go about our week, if there's any, anyone that we need to ask forgiveness from or anybody that we need to forgive, that we will release those people, Lord, and we will be free of the debts. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Could I, Lucas, could you and your son get rid of this ginormous thing? Thank you. Oh. Who, who? Yeah, Jen, just stay up here for a sec. I just want you to guys to honor her and what she just shared because that is not easy to share. So let's just give her another round of applause. <laughs> Just close your eyes. Lucas, can you come up and stand by Jen real quick? Just in case. Jen, as you were sharing, I got a word for you, but I also got a word for other people in the church that are, that hearts are just being touched by what you shared. If, if that's you, if you were just, if your heart was burning inside of you as Jen was sharing and you know that you're carrying some of that stuff, some of those mindsets or whatever, just raise your hand right now. Just look around in the room. Yeah, just raise your hand. I know there's a lot more of you. Yeah, come on. It's, that, that hits, that hits super close to home. Amen? And so, what I want you to think about, just close your eyes, is everything that led to Jen's breakthrough was her hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he guided her into all truth. And he used the word as well, but I just, I thought, I was just thinking and sitting back going, man, it's such a cool uh, window into that beautiful relationship with the Lord of what he has for us. And um, so for some of you, your breakthrough is just on the other side of asking some good questions to your heavenly Father who will guide you into all truth, amen? But Jen, when you ask that question, is it always going to hurt? <laughs> and um, I just heard the justice of Jesus. The justice of Jesus is coming upon your life, Jen. In greater measure, and it's, he's offering it today. The justice of Jesus is he took what I deserved. Now I get what he deserved. He took what I deserved, and now I get what he deserved. So in Jesus' name, I just say, Jen, receive the justice of Jesus in greater measure in the name of Jesus. And for those of you who raised your hand, I just want you to come on up. Come on up. We're just going to pray right now. I'm going to step into this place. Having that prodigal son mindset, I just want to you place your hands on your head. If that prodigal uh, 
son mindset like hey I just like hey just get in you know yes the God loves me I know he loves me but I'm just gonna be a servant I'm just gonna live in the house and no one has to look at me or whatever I'm just gonna just kind of mind my own business kind of thing right if that is you I just want you to place your hands on your head and say Jesus I take that mindset right now and now lift lift your hands off of your head and place it like you're giving it into Jesus' hands and say, I give that mindset to you. I give that mindset to you. And then I want you to reach up like you're reaching into heaven. Just reach up like you're reaching into heaven and say, Jesus, would you give me the mindset of a son? And now put that back on your head. See, I take on my heavenly identity as a mindset of a son. In Jesus' name. And say, I accept the justice of Jesus. See, the beauty of what God has done in our lives, it's not focused on our sin. It's focused on what he did. He got rid of it. Come on. He's taking our filthy rags and he's giving you robes of righteousness. And right now, Lord, I just release the justice of Jesus in this room in new ways. What the enemy meant for harm, what the enemy did in lying to these people up front, in lying to your sons, Lord Jesus, I pray that your justice would come in and bring reconciliation, peace, and peace in Jesus' name. I speak shalom in this room in Jesus' name. I release shalom in this room in Jesus' name. I speak peace over your minds in Jesus' name. Yeah, just begin to thank Jesus for what he's done in your life. Yes, Lord. Everything he touches gets healed. Everything he touches gets healed. Leadership and prayer team, if you can just, as you're led, just walk around and just begin to pray for people. Thank you, Lord. Just begin, if you're up front and you're asking the Lord questions, just begin to ask the Lord those questions like Jen did. Just begin to ask the Lord to reveal stuff to you, and He's gonna He's gonna speak to you right now. Lord, I pray that you would reveal every place of shame that still has where shame still has a hold. That we may give it to you. And you may burn it with your consuming fire and replace it with love and acceptance. Hallelujah. If there's some of you in this room that you know that God is, if part of Jen's story about the forgiveness and that you know that you're holding on to unforgiveness and bitterness, just ask the Lord to reveal to you who you need to release right now and just begin to release those people. Say, I forgive them. I release them into your hands, Jesus. I cut the tether between me and them. I cut the tether. I cut the chains between that pain they caused me and them in Jesus' name and I release them into your hands. Just begin to release people. Jesus has freedom for you this morning. He has freedom for everybody in the room this morning. Come on. release and forgiveness over people right now you're going to start feeling a shift in your body
bitterness has caused a tumor in somebody in this room this morning. And I just, as you're releasing that, God's going to bring healing into your body. begin to release that. Just be obedient. As the Lord gives it to you, just begin to release it. Speak it out loud. Don't be, don't allow fear to keep you from your breakthrough, church. Don't allow fear to keep you from your breakthrough this morning. Just step in. Step in. Thank you, Jesus. holding on to this false view of yourself and you're walking through it like how Jen was talking, how she you know, got triggered and it brought it back up and you're wondering the same thing, when is this triggering going to stop? When is this view going to stop? And I just see, I saw the Lord saying, your time of visitation is today. I'm coming to you right now and if you will... Uh, I'm standing at the door and knocking. I'm revealing your new identity to you right now. If you will grab hold, if you open the door and accept me in, I will give you that new identity and it will cut off that old identity forever today. And just begin to release those old identities into the hands of the Lord and accept your new identity. Release the filthy rags and grab your robes of righteousness from the Lord Jesus this morning. Justin, uh, Justin Matherson, he gave a sermon quite a long time ago. It was about being hidden in Christ. That, like it, I think of it as just, um, he didn't say this, but it's, it's pretty much that your insides are covered by your outsides. <laughs> you know, like your, your skin is covering everything that, that you need to survive and live and thrive. And when Jesus comes in, when he's hidden inside, it breathes life into everything. And um, Justin wanted me to share this. Um, and if, if you came up front today, I just want, if you just want to sit or on your knees or just sit down, I really felt like I was supposed to read this poem over you. It's called Hidden. And it's for those who have been lost in regret. And this, is, this was written a while ago after someone actually had spoken to me about some decisions that they had made long ago. Um, just kind of exactly what Jen was talking about, like just always having that in her mind of what she had done and just living as that prodigal that wasn't receiving what God had. And so I'm just gonna release this over you guys. And I can't believe for all these years I've kept this hidden inside. I can't believe I never knew that this was just a lie. I can't believe the scandalous love was waiting closely by. As I died and withered with profound regret of all that I had done, because every time I wanted to be close, I felt 10 steps behind. I felt that the scandalous love was never really mine. I felt it true, but could never really comprehend how great this love, how swift this comfort, how demanding on my pride. 
This pain I feel has left me faced with fear and torment deep within. Oh God, if I had only known the way I'd feel right now. I feel this drawing, I feel your pursuit, but I have nothing worthy to give. You said you'd take me here, you'd take me now with all my burdens laid bare. I'm unworthy, I'm unclean, if only you knew the things unseen. And more than despair and more than this drought, I feel your fire burning throughout. Every crevice and every bone, every heartache I've ever known, you're reaching in and pulling out. You're resurrecting purpose in life. It's uncomfortable to be naked and stripped of all the things I co-labored with. For many years I held this pain, believing I'd take it all to the grave. But you came. You're pulling it out. I've hobbled along with a limp in a crutch where false gospels told me I'm never enough. I'll never be free. I'll spend my life on cowering knees. But you came. You're pulling it out. It feels so awkward to give this away since I'm the one who created my name. Sinner, guilty, ridden with shame. It's me alone, I've dug this grave. But finally, I heard you break through a veil. The tearing and ripping of violent repair. You went down, you came up, all I gave, you got it back. Put it in me and sealed it up. The ground shook, my heart shattered, there I was broken and battered. You picked up my pieces and put me together, gave me a name far from the others. I am yours and you are mine. Worth it all, worth it all. I'd do it again. You're hidden inside. Look closely, my love. I've engraved you, my child. Not a day without love, not a day without passion. I'm not afraid of you, child, the things you have done. My love is much bigger, my arms are much stronger. There's absolutely nothing left I dare not plunder. Creation itself cries out for your song. Allow it to rumble until all fear is gone. Freedom, it screams from within your spirit. The death I died so you'd freely wear it. It's done, it's gone, my love. Please don't regret it. You're mine, you're hidden deep inside. The place you felt you'd never lie. It's done, it's finished, you've repented and cried. I'm willing, I've done it, now start a new life. I've overcome it. Return my love and sing the song of your Redeemer who has loved you and won. A song for you, a song for many. The justice of Jesus is building your story. I took all yours so you could take all mine. Now run as far as you can with my presence. Remember, I love you and it's all for my glory. Redemption, my love, for you are worthy. Be hidden, be hidden, be hidden in Christ. Today's the day where the enemy is slain because the false gospels that tell us that we're not enough are not allowed in this house. I, I can no longer go back to being a sinner saved by grace when God's given me a robe and a crown and a ring. You're a priest. You're a son. You're a daughter. And someone needs to hear that today. And maybe all of us need to hear that today, but I just feel it so loud. It's Don't go back to the dead corpse. He says you're a new creation, brand new, not, not the kind that you're not just changed, not just morphed into something different. You are completely new. That's why when Jen said today to remember, when you're in a place where God has you remember, it's not what you've done, it's what he's done. That's why those false gospels don't work because you're always reminded of your sin and God doesn't want you to re remember your sin. He wants you to remember who he is. So Jesus, we just thank you today that we're free and hidden 
in you. Completely hidden. <laughs> you know, I think of like my daughter Amelia, she's the oldest, and she's always hiding her things from her siblings. And when I think of being hidden in Christ, I think of stuff that she does with her most special little toys that she does not want her sisters to get a hold of. And so it's, it's funny, but the Lord was just like, be hidden. Find a hiding spot with me. Find a place that I'm just completely immersing you and surrounding you with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it is done, it is finished, you are free. And so, Jesus, we just receive that today. Can you guys just stand up with me and we'll just receive today just one last time and just say, God, I receive. I receive. I feel like right now God is burning on some of you your story. Someone needs to hear your story, your redemptive story. Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you that we're hidden in you and that we're free in you. And I just, I just feel like if any of you still want to deal with the Lord, you want to deal with Papa God, just come up front and just have some time with him while Kalia plays. I just feel like we're not supposed to move from this place. Um, so just if you're ready to go, if you're obviously our thing is if you're done before we are, just you guys can go. Um, but if you still feel like you want to deal with the Lord and just ask him some questions, like just just come up front and just sit with the Lord for a little bit and allow him to just release his love over you. So, yeah, we just thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to continue to do in this house. In Jesus' name, amen.